I just got back from the Consumer Electronics Show 2026 in Las Vegas, and here's all the big news about the innovations in robotic pool cleaning and lawn mowing. Starting with what I think is the biggest news, robotic mower companies seem to have heard loud and clear that RTK navigation, where you stick a big GPS antenna in your yard, is not something the average consumer wants to deal with. And instead, LiDAR has been widely adopted throughout the entire industry, with only a few holdout companies still using station-based RTK. And the other great news is that there is just tons of variety now. So you can buy the right mower for your exact lawn size, grass type, slope, and edge profile, ultimately saving you money by avoiding unnecessary features and bringing robotic lawn mowing one step closer to mass adoption. Starting with the company that's giving people the most options, Momotion has so many different models that it's getting a little bit hard to keep them straight. But the three that I'd like to highlight are the new full-size Luba 3 that has a 10,000 meter squared mowing capacity, which is about two and a half acres, and it uses what Momotion is calling tri-fusion navigation that has LiDAR, vision, and cloud-based RTK, and using its all-wheel drive system, it can handle slopes up to 39.6 degrees, which is much steeper than you'd want to mow with a traditional lawnmower. For smaller yards without massive slopes, the Momotion Yuka 2 is getting that same tri-fusion navigation system with LiDAR, vision, and RTK, but combined with a much smaller mowing capacity, two-wheel drive, and of course a much smaller price tag. And if you need all-wheel drive but you've got a smaller yard, the Luba 2 Mini series is for you, and Momotion showed off the new Luba 2 Mini 1000 that has a side trimmer disc to be able to get closer to edges, and it's got the same climbing capabilities as its Luba 3 Big Brother. However, one potential downside that we've seen with all-wheel drive systems is the possibility that soft ground can get torn up while the robot is turning. But Roborock aims to solve that with their new Rockmo X1 LiDAR by offering an active steering system on the front wheels that allows it to complete some extremely tight turns and makes for a much more gentle zero-point turn that's less likely to tear up your yard. Roborock also teased an edge module that can cut within three centimeters of the side of a unit, and the Rockmo X1 LiDAR also has independent suspension and and they showed it off navigating even the most treacherous yards without getting stuck. And speaking of getting stuck, a company that I've never heard of called Lopkin was at CES showing off their new E-series of robotic mowers that have a set of recovery arms that allow it to lift itself out of holes if it gets stuck, which seems like a great innovation. The Lopkin also has a side cutting module, but unlike the other side discs that still leave about three centimeters of uncut grass, Lopkin says their side trimmer cuts about twice as close, getting within 1.5 centimeters of the side of the robot. However, Ecovacs is going one better than that, and they are including a string trimmer on the side of every single one of their robotic mowers this year. And last year, the Ecovacs A3000 LiDAR paved the way for LiDAR to take over the industry. And this year, they've switched their lower capacity, more budget-friendly A2000 to LiDAR. And even their sub-$1,000 GOAT O1000 is getting LiDAR and their True Edge string trimmer. That True Edge string trimmer will use standard size trimmer line available in 10 meter pre-round spools. And one spool will trim around 7,000 linear meters of lawn edge. And all three models will be able to automatically detect areas where it should use the trimmer, but you can also also specify other areas in the app and turn off string trimming in other areas where there might be too much loose gravel to safely do string trimming. Yarbo also has a string trimmer available as one of its attachments for its new M series core that offers a similar style of modular yard equipment to their Y series core but in a much smaller package and with LiDAR and vision instead of RTK for navigation. It's still unclear whether the smaller M series will get all of the modular attachments that the Y series has but at CES they were showing off the trimmer, the snow plow, and the cutting deck which is available in both traditional discs or what they call straight blades that are more similar to the mulching blades on a traditional lawnmower. And that brings us over to the Limo One Plus. And Limo was the pioneer of the robotic mulching deck mower. The Limo One was a huge success, and the One Plus is an upgrade that they made from all the feedback that they gathered from their original release. With the biggest upgrade being a new set of mulching blades that are made from SK5 steel, which should be significantly more durable, but they also included bigger motors for the track system, allowing it to climb 100% grades, which is a full 45 degrees, and a new charging contact location that won't get covered up by grass clippings and won't need to be cleaned as often. The Limo One Plus is still using RTK as its main navigation system, but it also has an upgraded processor to get more information from its vision-based system, which will help it handle short disconnections from the RTK satellite-based navigation. Anthbot was also showing off their mulching and bagging capabilities, but they are taking a completely different approach. 
Unlike the Yarbo and Limo that are using actual mulching blades, the Anthbot N8 LiDAR uses a traditional cutting disc with razor blade style cutters on the bottom and scooped blades on the top that generate lift. And that lift draws grass clippings up into what they're calling their cyclone system. And in the cyclone system, smaller debris is able to fall back down to the lawn while larger debris is captured and sent back into the bag system. The 23 liter bag then has a capacity sensor. And when the bag is full, the Anthbot N8 LiDAR will travel to a specified area and automatically dump the bag before returning to its mowing task. As the name suggests, the N8 uses LiDAR and will offer a more affordable mulching system than competitors, and I know it'll be an absolute game changer for me if it can mulch and collect Florida oak tree leaves. And last, Dream and Muva both showed off almost identical robot lawnmowers, and Dream calls theirs the A3 Edgemaster, while Muva calls theirs the Lidex Ultra Flex. But both of them are all-wheel drive LiDAR motors with floating cutting decks that have one of their blade discs positioned just three centimeters from the side of the robot for more efficient edge cutting in what Dream is calling their Edge Master system, while Muva is calling that same system Ultra Trim 2.0. Dream also showed off the concept Dream Apex with a robotic arm mounted to the top of the mower that they claimed would do everything from moving sticks out of the yard to weeding and watering plants with a hose. But I think we are still a few years from seeing mowers with robotic arms actually hit the market. And interestingly, while Muva didn't have a mower with a robotic arm, they had a similar concept with a pool cleaner with a robotic arm. So I guess that is the perfect segue into the pool vacuums. And in terms of the actual pool cleaning robots that debuted at CES, we are seeing a lot of convergence onto just a couple different form factors. But most of the biggest innovations are actually in their docks rather than in the robots themselves. So I've also compiled this chart to be able to compare them. And we're going to start out with Beatbot, who has what seems to be the most realistic and practical dock. And it still requires you to manually retrieve the flagship Aquasense X from the pool, but upon placing it onto the Astro Rinse dock, the robot not only starts charging, but the debris bin is automatically emptied into a separate 22 liter compartment that Beatbot says can hold around 3,000 medium sized leaves and should only need to be emptied once every two months based on normal conditions. The Astro Rinse dock then automatically rinses the bin and the internal components of the Aquasense X with fresh water that you supply from a garden hose. And to me, this is the most unique feature and it should help reduce the rapid degradation in plastic that's common in robotic pool cleaners due to frequent and prolonged contact with chlorine and salt from pool water. In addition to compatibility with the Astro Rinse dock, the Aquasense X is BeatBot's most advanced all-in-one cleaner and skimmer and has 29 sensors including gyroscopes, ultrasonic distance sensors, infrared sensors, and a front-facing AI camera that can detect 40 different common objects in pools, allowing it to do targeted cleaning. However, if you don't need the dock and you mostly struggle with surface debris, the BeatBot Sora 70 might actually be a better option, since the Sora 70 has a unique water jet system called Jet Pulse that creates a water current on the surface, drawing more debris into the skimmer than normal. The Sora 70 also has a redesigned suction inlet that allows it to clean in as little as 20 centimeters of water, making it the perfect option for sun shelves and tanning ledges. Last year, I reported on the Ybot S3 that was supposed to be released in April of 2025, but it is now expected in Q2 of 2026. And the S3's dock takes a completely different approach and charges and empties the robot without ever taking it out of the pool. And Ybot is particularly focused on ease of setup and uses a solar panel for power and relies on pool water for cleaning out the robot's onboard debris basket, which definitely sounds convenient, but I do have some concerns about longevity if the robot is left in the pool 24 seven. And increased longevity is the main idea behind Motion's auto shore charge system that uses a robotic arm to lift the Motion Spino S1 Pro out of the water and onto its charging station so you won't need to manually remove your robot from the pool like the BeatBot dock. But unlike the BeatBot solution, the Mimotion dock doesn't have any sort of emptying or freshwater rinsing, but I do think that just getting the robot out of the pool and dry is a very good first step that will ultimately increase longevity. Mimotion's Spino S1 Pro isn't an all-in-one cleaner and skimmer like the BeatBot Sora 70 and Aquasense X, but it does clean the pool floor and walls up to the waterline, and I really like the design that has the brushes in front of the treads, which should let it clean into corners and around steps a little more effectively. Muva and Dream also have docks that are focused on just getting the robot out of the pool, but unfortunately I didn't get to see any demonstrations at the Dream or Muva booths of the robots actually docking and exiting the pool. But the general idea is the robot will drive up onto the dock and use its motors to adhere itself to the motorized plate on the side of the pool, and then that can hinge up and allow the robot to drive onto the top charging area. And again, Muva and Dream had very similar looking robots called the Dream Z2 Ultra 
and Muva Rover X10 that are both all-in-one vacuums and skimmers, and they've got an interesting addition of a top-mounted 360-degree LiDAR that I'm told will work both on the pool's surface and underwater, and should bring next-level accuracy and coverage, and possibly even the ability to map no-go zones in the future. Aper, who was the number one selling brand of smart pool cleaners in 2025, also had a dock displayed at their booth, but they said it was intended for a future model that wasn't actually displayed at the show. And instead, Aper's 2026 flagship is the Scuba V3 Ultra that has an automatic cleaning mode where you charge it up and you put it in the pool and it will intelligently ration its battery life to keep your pool clean for an entire week using its two AI cameras to judge how dirty the water is and whether the pool surface or pool floor needs more attention based on weather patterns and local conditions. And one of the coolest things to me was their new jelly float system that uses airbags to ascend to the surface instead of the old method that needed to climb the pool walls. And Aper says this new method is significantly more energy efficient, but I'm personally glad to see it because I know that the previous method didn't work when my pool's water level got too high. And not all of the pool robots that were displayed at CES were flagships, and Muva also showed off their Diver A10, which is a more affordable option that cleans the floor, walls, and water lines without skimming. And Ecovacs has also thrown their hat into the robotic pool cleaning ring with two new robots for 2026, and a more premium model that's called the Aquamarine C1 will feature a full set of mapping sensors, including laser, RGB camera, and sonar to employ Ecovacs' popular AIVI 3D mapping. And they also have a more budget-friendly Aquamarine P1 that has similar cleaning power with fewer sensors and promises to offer excellent performance without an ultra-premium price tag. So what do you think? Personally, I think that CES 2026 was huge in terms of innovation in the pool and lawn space. And if this kind of thing interests you, make sure you get subscribed because I will likely review everything in this video within the next year. In the description, I've got the links to the Google Sheets that I've been referencing throughout this video, and I will keep those updated with the most current information as I get it. I'm also going to include my affiliate links on that sheet and completely optional, but if you decide to buy something based on my reviews, I always appreciate when you use those links since as an affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.